And the next speaker was President W. B. Smith. It was five minutes. Okay, thanks. Um, I just want to read something to you, first of all, and see, do you recognise where it comes from? Um, it's from the Minister's plan. Um, off-balance sheet mechanisms would be used to maximise financial opportunities and leverage other assets available to the state, including land. Under the strategy's governance structure, a dedicated work stream will be established from within the DCLG, uh, the Department of Finance and Housing Finance Agency, to progress specific off-balance sheet mechanisms, expansion of NAMA and large-scale PPP and a new financial vehicle. If it sounds familiar, it should because it was put before you in the last government by Minister Alan Kelly. And it's just been copied and pasted into the current plan. I'm not as optimistic as many people. and I'd love to be optimistic in this house, but I'm not. And uh, I'm certainly not optimistic when I look at the housing policy. And the main one I'm not optimistic about is this idea that the only way we'll get housing is by going through the private market. That the private market reigns supreme, is God Almighty, and uh, therefore we have to look to it. Now, I took some notes out of a book today that was documenting the history of social housing. And uh, just on this table, social housing in, say, the year 2000 to 2007 was about 46,000, maybe 47,000 of the entire housing stock. Private housing was nearly half a million. So you're looking at probably one-tenth of all houses are social houses, which means that the, um, and, and the delivery of social houses being very non-committal in this document means that the 130 plus thousand families on the social housing list are either going to have to do one or two things and it looks to me like it's probably the first. One is to get into a HAP scheme, a housing uh, assistant payment scheme. Now I'm familiar with this scheme, having been a councillor for the last seven years. The first thing to say about it, very difficult to get a landlord who's interested because the landlords have the pick of the crop now. They can go to students, they can go to IT workers, they can go to professionals all over the city and take them in rather than go on an arrangement with the local authority that ties them in uh, for a number of years. Now I think something like, there's a commitment here to get something like 550 families into the HAP scheme by the end of the year. Well by the time we come back here in September, you're talking about September, October, November, December, I think you'd be working magic to get 550 families housed under HAPs in four months. We'll see. The proof will be in the pudding. But let me put a few bob on it. Uh, Minister, there you are. Um, let me put a few bob on it and tell you it won't be done, it can't be done. And the reason is, is that this government, like Minister Alan Kelly before, are relying entirely on the private market. Social housing is absent again from this document. And it's absent not by accident, it's absent for a reason. And, uh, and the reason is ideological and it's political. And it's about feeding the developers and the bankers and the same old crooks and gangsters and financiers who put us in the position we're in. I believe that both yourselves and Minister Kelly to a degree are quite genuine about this, but I don't believe that uh, you're going to achieve much. You will build more houses than Alan Kelly did, not because of the plan, but because it would be impossible to build any less than he did. Um, and if we were promised fi some like five and a half thousand social houses by Al from under Alan Kelly by 2015, and we got 400 odd by 2016, we could try and work out the uh, the, 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 the maths and see how much uh, how much this particular minister can deliver. And the problem with the housing market is the housing market. Because it's a market, it gives us lots and lots of problems. It's doing little to deal with um, homelessness. And I just want to say a quick word about modular housing. Because I have some in my backyard in Cherry Orchard. And we had a protest recently which stopped the, houses going, the building going ahead. But they were not objecting to the housing. People in Cherry Orchard, despite the fact that they've one shop, no post, post office, no dentist, no, no one school... Um, no, no doctor, nothing in Cherry Orchard and, and a lousy bus service uh, were objecting to the housing scheme going ahead because the, the builders didn't know what they were doing. They were cutting through the estate and taking away cul-de-sacs and putting mainstream roads through another. And when the council were called through our councillors to check up what was going on, nobody had any maps or drawings. So even at that most basic fundamental level, we are making a bags and a hames of this. And we're paying somebody 
I don't know who, a quarter of a million, a quarter of a million folks for each of these modular houses. Um, I'm not saying that they're going to be nasty or horrible, but a quarter of a million, when we know from uh, other builders and people like Deputy Mick Wallace, you could build a decent home, actually build a decent home on public land for about 150,000. Why we're not doing it? Because the market reigns supreme and there's something wrong with your heads that you can't get it out of your heads, move away from the market and take public responsibility for Thank decent you, public housing. I am now going to